Hey, what's up, brother? In today's video, I'm going to spend some time giving you some perspective and hopefully some insight on how you can overcome the setbacks that you have in your life and defeat that sense of self-doubt that you get when you do. Now, what I can tell you is that after working with thousands of men over the past few years, teaching them how to lose weight, get in shape, reclaim their confidence and rebuild their lives after setbacks like divorce, losing their jobs or gaining a bunch of weight. One of the biggest struggles that people have is the sense that they're not making progress or the sense that they've failed because somehow they're not where they want to be in the amount of time that they thought they should have been there. And so hopefully this video can offer you some insight on why it's important for you to understand that the path to success to anywhere that you want to go is not linear. It's not a straight line. There's going to be situations where you take one step forward and two steps back. You're going to plateau. You're going to fall off. You're going to want to quit. And learning the skills that you need to learn so that you can manage your emotions is one of the lessons that you need to learn so that you can get where you want to go. I can tell you right now, I've had a lot of huge, major setbacks in my life. I've been fired from jobs. I struggled with a very traumatic divorce. I've had to start completely over more than once. I've filed bankruptcy in the past. I've been in a place where I've been homeless. And through all of these setbacks, every single one of them, I learned a very important lesson that I needed to learn so that I could become the man I am today. So in my divorce, I learned that it was important for me to take the lead and take ownership and make sure that I was always fulfilling the obligations that I was making to the world as well as to myself and make those obligations non-negotiable. When I filed bankruptcy, I learned that I needed to do a better job of managing my money. When I was 22 years old, I actually got kicked out of the army. And that was a huge setback for me. Now, fast forward 15 years, I had my honorable discharge reinstated. But back then, I was in a place where I wasn't accountable for my actions and responsible for the commitments that I was making. Also a lesson that I had to learn. In my business, I've failed several times. Been in a place where I couldn't cover and pay the bills, couldn't pay my employees, couldn't pay myself, ultimately leading to my vehicles being repossessed. And at one point, I almost lost my house to foreclosure. And so setbacks, hardships, challenges, obstacles in your life, those are just the catalyst for the lesson that you need to learn so that you can get to the other side. And so to kind of put this into perspective, because I know you're frustrated and you're probably watching this video because you're in a place right now where you're not sure what to do. And so what I want you to do is I want you to think about the very basic beginner level, Super Nintendo, if you're older like me, Super Mario game. The way that those games work is you have level one. Level one is easy. I go through, I get some exposure to some of the basics of the game, jumping, breaking blocks. I need to jump on top of the little Goomba guys so I don't get hit. Maybe I learn how to kick the shell off of the turtles at one point during the first level. But for the most part, for most people who've played video games before, level one is trivial. It's easy. Then after I beat level one, I move to level two. It's still pretty easy. But during level two, I face some type of new challenge or problem. And I may die the first time, but after I fall in a hole or I fail to kill the bad guy or whatever the case may be, I learn a lesson. Then hopefully I start the level over. And when I get to the point where I failed last time, I succeed. Through that process of failing, getting back up, going back to the beginning and trying again, I learned a lesson. And what happens is mentally, and you don't realize this is occurring, you take that lesson and you put it in your toolbox. Then I move on to level three. And guess what? The same lesson that I learned in level two, I'm probably gonna run into in level three, except the only difference is they're gonna add something more challenging, more complex, or something completely different that they want me to learn. Then I go through that same process. Well, guess what? If you make it to level 10, basically what you've done in that process 
is you've demonstrated that you have the ability to successfully navigate the environment up to that point. All the challenges, all the obstacles, all the hard things that are in those levels, you have now developed the skill set necessary to overcome them. But then you reach level 10. Not only is it all the skills that you learned on the first nine levels, but there's also some stuff in there that, holy crap, I can't do this. You spend hours on it, beating your head against the wall on this challenge. You begin to get frustrated. You begin to get angry, potentially. Maybe you feel like you need to take a break from the game. You put it down. The next day you come back and you spend more time on it and it's just kicking your ass. And then finally it clicks, boom. You overcome that plateau. You learn the skill. It's almost like a light bulb. And you now know how to successfully navigate level 10. Well, now you've demonstrated that you have the ability to go through the first 10 levels. The concept that I just explained to you is the same exact thing in life. What happens is you're going to continue to face the same problem in your life in different forms, in different fashions until you learn to overcome that problem. If you struggle with effective communication in your relationships, then that shortfall in your skill development is going to become a problem in almost all of your relationships. And it's going to continue to be a problem for you to develop that skill. If you're an entrepreneur and you continue to struggle to bring in clients because your sales process is broken, then you're going to continue to face that problem in your business until you refine, optimize, update your sales process. If you're working out in the gym and you're having a hard time overcoming a plateau, it's very likely that there needs to be some type of shift that occurs in either your nutrition or the way that you train so that you can push yourself and push your body beyond that perceived limit. There's a lesson inside of every problem. And the reason why you feel like you're not getting better, you're facing setbacks, you struggle with these challenges in your life is because the lesson that exists within that challenge, you haven't learned, you haven't applied. And so I'm sure you've probably seen these really hyper successful people out there who seem to have it all figured out. The only difference between them and you is they've already invested the time developing the skills that they needed to get to their level in life. So it's not that they're lucky. It's not that they're better than you. It's not that they're more talented. None of those things matter. Most of this has mostly to do with your ability to continue to fail but learn from your mistakes. Now, the other thing I wanna point out, and I'm just gonna give you a quick story here, is I've been doing jujitsu for a really long time. I'm a blue belt. And the reason I'm a blue belt is for a couple reasons. The first is because I've moved around a lot. And so every time I've gotten to a new academy and I've developed a relationship with a professor there, and it was about time for me to look to get promoted or move up in rank, I moved. I relocated, something happened, I had a setback, I quit, I got hurt, whatever the case may be. And now here we are, I'm sitting here wondering, why am I not making the next rank? My skill development is where it needs to be, my experience level, my maturity in the sport, I'm fairly consistent with it. But at the school I'm in right now, I've only been training with the professor there for maybe six months, and he needs to ensure that he's vetted me and my skill set and my maturity on my journey so that he feels confident that he can stand behind the promotion. Should I be frustrated because I'm not getting that promotion? No. Why? The color of the belt around my waist doesn't make me any better or worse at the sport. What I should be focused on first is skill development, the benefits of jujitsu, why I do it, and the positive impact that it has upon my health, my life, my ability to defend myself and my family, and all of the reasons why I actually started in the first place. A lot of people find themselves in a place where they're seeking this external validation, this promotion, this level up, this label, 
when the truth is, whether you have it or not, doesn't really make a difference other than how everyone else perceives you. That's it. And so when I get promoted, great. I'm excited about it. If I don't, no big deal. Because guess what? I would much rather be the really, 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 really good, talented, strong, well-versed blue belt than a purple belt who underperforms, right? Kind of funny because jujitsu is something that you can pretty much take the lessons that you learn from it and apply it to everything in life. But this is a phenomenal example. And it's hilarious because within the last year or so, my son and I started competing together. I actually just got hurt just a couple months ago at a jiu-jitsu tournament. I ruptured my tricep tendon 85%. The surgeon didn't want to do surgery on it because he didn't feel like it was going to improve the recovery time in any way because of the nature of the tear. And so I found myself in a place where I felt like I was finally, after years of inconsistency and setbacks, finally coming to a place where I felt like I was making positive growth and progress in the sport, and then I got hurt. I was so down on myself. I was so upset. I remember I woke up the next day after the tournament, and my whole arm was purple. I had no use of it. I went to the doctor, got the MRI through the whole process, spoke with the surgeon, and he looked at me and he basically said, you're not going to be using your arm for at least three or four months. They put me in this brace and I was like, okay, great. Well, here I am. It's been about 10 weeks. I lasted, I think maybe eight. I haven't been able to lift weights, but I started some peptides to help me recover more quickly. And I decided I can continue to train jujitsu. I just need to train a different way. Before my game was very top heavy. It was aggressive, push, 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 which isn't something I could really do with the injured arm. I was reliant upon my strength and at my height and size and weight, I'm stronger than 99% of the people on the mat. Well, now I'm missing an arm. So it forced me to start developing parts of my game that I hadn't worked on in the past because I needed to protect my injury while also be able to protect myself. And so I used that setback as a way to force myself to become more well-rounded and capable in the thing that I was trying to progress in. Now I'm like 90% there. We just went back to the gym this weekend, validated that I have the ability to work out, and lift weights again. The peptides did a phenomenal job of expediting the recovery. I did a really good job of being responsible and didn't re-injure myself. And now my game has improved substantially over the last few months because of the injury. Sometimes these setbacks that you have, you perceive them as these terrible things. But the truth is, it's just been placed in your life so that you can learn the lesson that you need to learn. Stop thinking that your progress is supposed to be this straight line. You're going to experience setbacks, challenges, obstacles. And most of the time, the only reason why you become frustrated is because you're focused on the wrong thing. So when you face these setbacks and hardships, the question that you should start asking yourself is what lesson do I need to learn here? What am I missing? And instead of spending so much time focusing on the outcome, focus on the journey and understand that while it may not appear that you're making progress, once you learn that lesson and you apply it to your existing skill set, those things compound upon themselves. And sometimes one skill is going to take you from being able to pass level five to all the way to 20. And you'll go one, two, three, four, five, get stuck on five for a while, and then finally beat five and go whoa, all the way up to 20. And it'll feel really good. But remember, that time that you spent learning the skill that you needed to learn at step five wasn't a waste. It's just something that you needed to spend extra time learning and applying to your life so that you could put that skill set into your toolbox. So anyway, hopefully this video was valuable for you and it gave you the perspective that you need to overcome some of the setbacks that you're having in your life. If you don't know, my name is Josh Holyfield. I run a men's coaching company called The Iron Forge and I have made the commitment to do these videos for you every day. 
So if you could do me a favor, if you feel like this video is something that is valuable for you and it could help someone you know, send it to them. I truly believe that if I know something that can help another person and I withhold that information, I'm doing them a disservice. So take that time, send it to your friend. And if you feel like this content is useful, I'll see you again tomorrow. Stay vigilant and we'll talk soon.